Hello, welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. Today we're going to talk about Move Scene. This can be found under the Surfaces menus. Under Edit Curves, we have Move Scene right here. And also under Edit Nerves, Move Scene right here. They're both very similar, but one is for a curve, Edit Curves, Move Scene. And one is for a nerve surface, Edit Nerves, Move Scene. They're very similar, so I figured we'd combine the two into one video. First, let's go over the edit curves function. Now, the move seam, what a seam is, is a position on a nerve's surface or curve where the curve starts or where the surface starts. Because nerves have a start and an end to their surface. I'll demonstrate that. Let's go to create nerves sphere. I'll just create a quick one. This is a nerve sphere. Now, if you look at this sphere while it's selected, you can see the wireframe. You can see all the green lines all over the nerve sphere. These surface curves are corresponding to a hull. Right click, I can choose hull here. And you can see I have this kind of wireframe cage around my nerve surface. I have a video going over nerves components. If you want to click over here, it'll kind of explain exactly what a nerve's hull is compared to an isoparm, compared to a CV, so you can kind of get the lingo. So click over here, you can feel free to check that out for nerves components. But if I select this hull, what I'm doing is selecting the CV row that corresponds to this isoparm, and I can scale it and move it and reshape the surface. Easy enough. So when I look at my isoparms, you can see this one here is thicker than the rest of the curves. It might be hard to see in the video, but it is. This one is a little bit thicker than the rest of them. And what this line, this thicker line, is an indication of is the surface's seam. So over here under the inputs for my sphere, I have mate nerve sphere. I can click this to expand the creation options for this sphere. And you see I have a start sweep and end sweep. It goes from 0 to 360. So literally the start of the sphere at the seam going around 360 degrees to back to the scene where the sphere ends. If I were to change these values, let's say my end sweep is smaller than 360, you see breaking off of that scene, the sphere actually becomes incomplete because I'm changing my end sweep to be less than a full 360 degrees. So now my sphere goes from zero at the seam around 292 degrees, 0 0.1618, and stops here. So the seam indicates where this break is in the surface. And since I've already got a nerve surface here, let's go ahead and just talk about edit nerves move seam. We'll go back to the curve one later. Let's say I want the seam to move. I don't want the seam right here for some reason. If I right click on my sphere and choose isoparm, I can select a different isoparm, say the opposite one on this side edit nerves, move seam. Click it. So this is where the seam is on the surface and the seam indicates where the textures seam is as well. If I open the go to window UV texture editor when I select my sphere you'll see all these little lines in here and let me uh, hide the grid. So this is the UVs of my sphere. You can see I can grab these points and move them. And these points correspond to a point on the sphere. So you'll see this point here on the UV texture editor corresponds with this point here. So if I were to select this point, the pole here, you'll see that all these points along this right edge get selected. So this, these points are at the top of the sphere. So I select these points, they're the next row. If I select these points down the middle, they're the middle of the sphere here, and so on. So these points along the top edge of the UV texture editor and the bottom edge for this, for this sphere is where the seam is. 
And so if I were to create a texture to wrap around this sphere, I would need to make sure I know, knew that the texture would start and stop at this line. And that could create a seam in the texture, as well as in the surface, of course. So if I were trying to hide the seam, and I created the model, but I want my texture seam to be, say, if I was, if I was creating a NURBS uh, head, for example, the seam, I may want to be down the back of the head so that it's kind of hidden from view as opposed to down the center of the face where it's right front and center. After creating your face already, you, could, you don't necessarily want to deal with that seam. You can simply select an isoparm to be the new seam. So if I right click and choose this isoparm over here, go to edit NURBS, move seam. Now my seam is running down the opposite direction of the sphere. And if I go back to my UV texture editor, if I select this top row, now you'll see it's selecting these CVs over here as opposed to the ones that were going the other way. So the seam of the texture now is in the back of this sphere as opposed to the front. So where the seam is is important in that way. Also when you're joining surfaces together, if I were to try to say create a second sphere, duplicate the sphere, move it up here, and say I right click and choose the, the isoparm that was originally the seam, and I'll move it over here, edit nerves, move seam, click the history now. So now these two spheres, the seams are on opposite directions. If I were to try to create a surface between the two, that seam will affect it. So with these two spheres, if I were to right click on this one, choose isoparm, and I'll just select this isoparm here, right click on this one, hold shift, and choose this isoparm. So I have both of these isoparms selected on the two spheres, and again my seams are in opposite directions on my spheres. If I go to Edit NURBS, Attach Surfaces, you'll see that when it tried to blend these two spheres together, it twists right here at the intersection. So if I undo this, go back to my top sphere, and I'm going to change the scene position to match the scene position of, if I can click the right one, there we go, to match the scene position of the original sphere. And I can click this button here to show wireframe on shaded. So even though my, this sphere is not selected, I can still see the wireframe, and you can see that thicker line here indicating the scene. So I want to choose this line on my top sphere to kind of line up the seams. Let's go to Edit Nerves, Move Seam. I'll delete the history from my new my sphere after I've moved that seam. So now the seams are lined up. If I choose the two spheres and try that action again, so I'm going to select Shift Select the isoparm on the opposite side. There we go. I have both of these isoparms selected now with my seams lined up on my two spheres. Edit NURBS, attach surfaces, and now you'll see the attachment is much smoother. No twisting because the surfaces are lined up in that way. So that's the main reason why move seam is so important, especially for NURB surfaces. So now let's go over the curve command. So now I have a new scene. I'm going to go to create NURBS primitives circle. So this creates a circular curve in my scene. Now the reason why I created a circle as opposed to drawing a curve with the CV curve tool, which, is in, which can be found in the create CV curve tool here. So the reason why I use a circle as opposed to just drawing a curve is that the move scene command only works on closed curves, which the circle is a closed curve. It doesn't have a start and end that's obvious, such as go to create CV curve tool. If I draw a curve, hit enter. Obviously, this curve starts here and ends here. This is not a closed curve, this is an open curve. The circle is closed, it's a full flowing curve into itself. So I'm going to delete that one and choose this one. If I right click on my curve and choose curve or control vertex, you'll see my points, and I'll hide the grid for now. And let's, yeah, black background. You see I have a square here, and the square on a curve, when you're looking at the CVs of a curve, 
the square dot, the square point, indicates the start of the curve. And then the U, this one looks like the little U, that is the curve direction from the square. So the curve is flowing in this direction. And now we have normal points for the rest of the curve until it gets back to the square. So the square indicates the seam of this curve. So if I want to move the seam for the curve, I'm going to right click, I'll choose curve point as my component selection method. I'll just click and drag on the curve and you see I have a little red dot that moves with my cursor. I'll choose a new point on the curve, say here. When I let go it changes to be yellow, indicating it's highlighted. Now I'll go to edit curves, move seam. Click it. Nothing really seems to happen, but if I right click and choose control vertex, you'll see now over here, my square is down here, and the U is over here, so the surface is flowing in the same direction, but now the seam has been moved. And it works essentially the same way as a NURB surface, where now that this seam is here, if I want to try and do a curve function with another surface or another curve, if the seams are lined up or at least close enough together that they're not twisting, it'll have a smoother and cleaner result. So that's been move seam for surfaces and curves. Again, you can find that under the surfaces menu set, edit curves, move seam right here, or at NURBS, move seam right here. Hope you enjoyed that and hope you uh, learned a little bit. If you have any requests for future videos, please feel free to let me know. If I miss something, if you still don't understand something, definitely ask questions. I'll do my best to uh, answer and I uh, hope you subscribe and like and all that kind of good stuff. I really appreciate it and thanks again for watching.